first and foremost, thank you for attending. You never know when you do a session what sort of audience you'll get. So this is the first time doing this particular session for me. So uh, welcome to our session uh, titled Automated Application Deployment with Azure DevOps. By show of hands, how many of you are using Azure DevOps in your handful of you so far? Okay, awesome. Well, hopefully you'll learn a little bit today. Uh, my name is Richard Schoen. I'm a senior solution consultant at Appian on the pre-sales team. Uh, I started my career, don't do the math, but it was back in 1982 on the System 36 and AS400. So I've been around since before PCs. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's been a fun arc of history that, that I've been around. I've worked most of my career in document management, process automation, workflow, those sorts of things. Uh, and I enjoy helping others learn new automation technologies. So uh, hopefully in this next 29 or so minutes, we'll impart some good knowledge on Azure DevOps for you guys. And I also have a deep development background too. So even though I'm in pre-sales and sales, I also have done a lot of development, so I'm one of those weird people that kind of works both sides of the fence. Uh, so our agenda will provide a quick introduction into Appian deployment and why you might want to automate it. And then we'll look at the Appian deployment REST API and, and where it's at today. And then we'll also talk about using the deployment APIs with Azure DevOps and potentially some other de DevOps tools as well. And we'll take a quick look at some deployment, sample deployment scripts and take a few questions. So I'll try and make sure we get through this. I may or may not choose to cut a few slides depending on how time goes, because I always tend to prepare slide content for an hour, but um, I'll be moving relatively fast. So uh, forgive me for that just because of the shorter time frame. So, uh, and also I'll be at Appian World all week, so feel free to reach out if you want to talk Azure DevOps or anything Appian in general. All right, so the traditional Appian deployment process, it, it, it goes something like this. You're generally creating a package of selected objects, or maybe you've got an app that you want to deploy, and then you would export your application and maybe import it into another environment if you're doing it that way. Or you might use the compare and deploy process, right? So that's historically what we've been doing. And that's when I started at Appian, that's kind of how we were deploying applications as well. Um, so whenever possible, we recommend using the built-in direct compare and deploy method. Um, so you can go upstream either to your tech QA, your test, your prod environments. Uh, so compare and deploy provides that end-to-end -end deployment process right from within Appian. But some customers have chosen to do manual deployment and then they manually select the export and deploy packages. And more recently, over the last two years, the, com the continuous integration environments like Azure DevOps have taken hold and they've become really popular. And I get a lot of pre-sales questions about, we want to be able to use an API to deploy from Azure DevOps and my other environments. So what do you guys have available for us? So automating the de development in the Appian platform is important when a company wants to more closely tie its Appian deployment processes with other applications that live within your other development tools or, uh, or Azure DevOps itself. But an example might be maybe you've got a web service, you built an Appian application, but it's reliant on an upstream web service that's written in Java or C Sharp or some other language. So being able to coordinate those efforts and be able to deploy uh, both types of APIs at, in a single deployment or a single deployment environment is one way uh, Azure DevOps is used. And I've seen that a lot where there's multiple applications that have to be coordinated. So being able to control when an application gets packaged and deployed by scripting from an environment like the Azure DevOps uh, allows your DevOps teams to own that process. And then with automation, you get a more controlled, lower effort, error-free en environment. So usually you can set it, I, I won't say set it and forget it, but you set it up once and maybe you have to do minor tweaks periodically. But you're not always doing it manually or, or uh, try having to remember all the steps each time. <coughs> so, th so the Appian REST deployment API was introduced in 21.2 of the Appian platform a few years back. And the main intent was to allow DevOps processes to automate development pipelines. And it's been pretty much feature complete since last year. I, I was happy to see in 23.3, when they released really the whole, almost an end-to-end -end tool set now to be able to do export of applications, capture of the assets, and then importing them into an upstream environment. So the REST API can also be scripted with your favorite languages. So if you're using PowerShell or Python or Bash or C Sharp or Go or whatever your favorite language might be, you can use that for scripting. Um, you can trigger external Appian deployments programmatically from Azure DevOps pipelines and other environments. You can integrate to your automated pipelines, coordinate with your other software release processes, and as we said, set it up once. So the deployment APIs fall into these categories. So you export apps and packages, in import apps and packages, get inspection results, we'll go through each of these a bit, import apps and packages, get deployment results, and get the deployment logs. So pretty much everything that you would need to be able to export, import, and then review the logs either automatically or manual from some of your processes. So let's review the deployment REST API workflow. Uh, 
So the first step generally is you're going to create a package either for an application or a package, a set of objects that you want to deploy. And so you need to know its unique ID, and I'm going to call it unique ID. I, I find myself saying UUID a lot, so we'll call it the unique ID for this, for this session. But so when creating a package, you can associate it with an, an Azure DevOps story. I'll show you how to do that, or a JIRA ticket or some other environment too that you might be using. So here's a sample application open in Appian Designer. We're looking at a list of all the objects. And then at the top, you can see this is where we can create and deploy a package for our entire application. Or to display the application UUID, you can go to the tool bar icon and select application properties. And then you can determine the application ID for which you want to deploy. So you grab that unique ID and you can use that either with the APIs. Well, I guess mainly you probably would use it with the APIs because if you're comparing and deploying, you're doing it right from within Appian. So with the Appian Designer, we can create a new package or use the Show Packages option to display a list of available packages. You'll notice that the current package interface shows a list of packages, but it doesn't really show the UUID. I, I, I haven't checked to see if there's an outstanding request, but um, it also doesn't show like if you're going to the package properties, so it's not visible there. But it is visible through the API. So currently, since that's not available, I created a sample REST API connected system, which I'll show you in a second, and a sample user interface. And this will all be part of the Git repository that I created that you can use. But there you can actually have a user interface right from within Appian to be able to get your package unique IDs. So you simply enter the selected app ID and it lists the available packages for you. So pretty straightforward. Um, and as I mentioned, the sale will be in our repo that we provide. So since we're on the package detail screen, I also wanted to point out how to associate an Azure DevOps or another development ticket uh, with, with your packages. So basically you just click edit to, to edit the package details. And then this example shows an Azure DevOps ticket URL. Um, the link could be used uh, with the deployment REST API to select the package to use for a build. So maybe you take, take that URL and you do a, a package list or just to be able to link back to a specific epic or story right from within Appian if you want to be able to go over to Azure DevOps and see what was supposed to be happening during that release across um, Appian or the other platforms you might be using. So the, the, this endpoint uses the UUID of an application to list available packages. So this is the package details API. And then a connected system, have you all used connected systems before? Connected system is a great way to, to store in this scenario we're storing a service configuration, the URL for our environments, uh, and then basically our API key that we create or any password credentials. So it's a nice way to set that up once and it gets encrypted in the environment. And so developers that have been given access to that connected system can utilize it without having to know credentials, which is nice. So it keeps it very secure. Uh, this, this particular one points to my Appian instance URL and also holds my API en encrypted or my API key. After creating the connected system definition pointing to the U deployment API, I created this integration which takes in an application's unique ID, calls the deployment management REST API with the re appropriate endpoint to list the packages, and now that I have this integration created, I can use it in expression rules or in a user interface if I desire, so it's pretty nice. In my scenario, well, this actually looks a little closer. You can see in the, up in the upper middle part, I think about right there, I'm using the concat function where I'm building out, I'm taking my base URL and then concatenating the application ID to get the full URL that I need for this service. So pretty straightforward. And then I created, in my, my scenario, I could, have, I could have used that directly in the, in the uh, user interface that I built, but I tend to like to uh, drill in a little further to the data that I created. So I used an expression uh, rule, and this one I call DA get deployment packages. So that exercises the integration it drills into the actual JSON packages, and then they can be returned and used in our user interface. So a read-only grid with an Appian, if you've, I'm sure most of you have used that, is a great vehicle to be able to surface data from web services or other data sources. Pretty cool. All right, so since the unique IDs are not available in package properties, I created a sample Python script for listing, listing and, and, and a PowerShell one as well, for listing the deployment packages related to the application unique ID. So this particular sample script is used to list the packages for the application we identified via application properties. So the, let's take a look, quick look at that. I did a, since I didn't have time to do live demos, I just did a recording of this, but this particular script, I always like, if you've used Python before, like I always like to show as much information as possible. So you can see this one shows the JSON, and then it shows at the bottom, I actually formatted the results that I was sending back. So again, you'll be able to take these scripts and use them for your purposes, but it's a nice way to be able to service that information in Python.
And then this is what you'll see in from the command line if you exercise it uh, via, th this one is actually a PowerShell interface. And if you haven't used PowerShell, or, if, or even if you have, um, this, not everybody knows this, but it's available on Mac, Linux, and Windows now. So I, I find PowerShell really nice because it'll automatically, it goes even deeper than um, Appian in some senses, that it'll automatically parse JSON objects for you and do some of the formatting. So I can build shorter scripts than I might with, if I was using something like Python. So it's a nice, nice way to surface that. Okay, so let's talk about, so I, I think as I mentioned, if you're using the API, you're generally following sort of the export and import and deploy process. So we would start with, so in this scenario, you can see we have our application, we have a couple of packages set up for this one perhaps. And then we saw on the previous screens how to determine the application or the package unique ID, right? So we need that information uh, so we can deploy our app with a scripted process. And then this shows us actually triggering the package export. So it could be just from a script, maybe a Python script, it could be from an Azure pipeline, or I know GitHub has GitHub Actions in today's world as well, but basically we trigger that export process. And then when we're ready to export the package, uh, we, we can use the deployment API. The endpoint supports both, the, the same endpoint actually supports both export and import of packages. So there's an action code that you pass to it. Uh, the endpoint executes the deployment on an Appian environment. You can specify the name and description of the deployment, as well as the admin console settings, a deployment package, an import customization file, a plugin file, and other information you want to export. So uh, a deployment package is generally a single zip file. So it, it gets exported as a zip, but it contains all the objects that you might want to pull into a Git repository. So you might want to maybe export and store the entire zip file. Or sometimes people, they're not really code assets that you can use a whole lot, but every object is in an XML file. Sometimes people like to actually keep those files individually in their Git repositories. All right, so when you trigger a deployment, it triggers in the background as an asynchronous process. As you can see here, we're actually, it says loop, loop and check every 20 seconds. So the idea here is basically this, this deployment will run, it's looping, it's checking every five seconds in this particular one, but I've got a loop in my Python script where it's going back and it's just calling the status API until everything's done. So in this scenario, I combined a couple APIs. I, I define the, the export, starting of the export process, and then it returns a deployment ID, and then I pull that with that deployment ID until I get a status code of complete. So pretty straightforward. And they all sort of follow the same patterns for the most part. <clears throat> and then this one, this is an example doing one through PowerShell. So you can see it starts the export process. This one's not fully complete yet, it just starts it, but I'm adding polling to this one as well. So you have a good example in the repository of doing this with PowerShell or with Python. All right, oops, go back to that one, there we go. All right, so this endpoint uses the unique idea of the deployment to retrieve information about the deployment. We already talked about that. Uh, using that unique ID, you can poll every 10 to 20 seconds. And then the JSON response brings back all the downloadable URL information. So you can see in here, we actually have, this is a sample screenshot. You can see that I think the package zip URL, the deployment, if there's database scripts, if there's plugins. So all the assets that you might want to deploy. I think the only one that's required is the package, of course, right? Because you've got Appian objects that you're deploying in any one of those. All right, so this endpoint, this is the retrieve and review export deployment log. So this gives us the log for that deployment. And then the deployment log comes back in text format. So if you had an automation script, depending on how you want to do this, you might want people to eyeball it and take a look at it. But if you had an automation script, you might do something like download that text file and then roll through it looking for error codes or the word error or whatever you want to do to be able to trigger to your pipeline that something has failed during that deployment process, or in this case, the export process. All right, and then at the tail end, you can see there's our reviewing of the deployment, deployment log, and then we finally downloaded our assets, and we, may, we probably placed them into a Git repository, committed them there, or we've unzipped them and, and put all the assets together into a, zip, or into a Git repository. All right, so importing and deploying your applications and packages, just the reverse, right? So essentially we have this, so you'll probably want to inspect your packages before importing and deployment to the destination environment. It took me a while to get my hands around this when I was looking at the API, but the idea is that when you trigger an inspection, you provide it with uh, all the files that you want to upload. So key value pairs, if there's data, data values that you want to upload, packages, any other files that you want to upload, you, you provide those and they get uploaded during the inspection process. And then that process kicks off in the background. And then again, it's looping and reviewing the log. So 
you have the ability, so using the unique ID for the inspection we triggered, we can go back and pull it every 10 or 20 seconds to make sure everything worked as expected. So kind of the same pattern now, we've inspected, and then it'll come back with a log for us. And then you can see that, so importing and deploying. So once we've done our inspection and made sure everything is, is clean, you might have a step either manually or maybe as part of the same automation. If everything came back, there were no errors in our inspection log, now we want to actually use the, the import and deploy. And, and like we mentioned before, it uses the same deployment API. We just say import on the action code this time around, and we supply it with all the assets to upload, as far as the packages, our database scripts, same stuff that we did in the inspection, and then it, it will upload, and then it will start a deployment process in the background. So now we're deploying on our destination environment. And then again, that's asynchronous, and it'll come back with a unique ID that we can pull. Looks a little bit like that. <clears throat> and then this endpoint you, uh, uses the unique ID to retrieve information about the deployment. You can use this endpoint to retrieve the status regardless of whether you're importing or exporting packages. And then using the same unique ID we can pull, right? So we've seen that pattern already. Start a process, wait for it to finish by polling, and then check the return codes to make sure everything's good, and then check the logs. All right, and then retrieve and, retrieve and review the deployment log. All right, so if you, if you haven't set up um, the, the REST API in your system, generally you have to first enable the compare and deploy processes, right? So you would actually enable the deployment, you'd go into administration console, or, and then you'd enable both incoming and outgoing deployments. And you probably already have this if you're actually deploying to upstream environments. You probably already have these particular settings in, uh, created already. But the more important one is you need to create a new API key. So you would go to the web API settings in admin console, and then you'd say create, you hit the create button, and then you can create an API key. And I used to think there was something magical about doing these, but you can call it whatever you want. I called mine Appian API key, but I think you can call it whatever you want, which is nice. And um, then select a service account that you've set up, and then you'll be able to associate that with your API key. So it uses those permissions then when it's running any deployment information. And then you click create, and then you'll get to see this one time. And somebody asked me, this is not a real key, so don't copy it or, or try and memorize that. Um, but, but you want to memorize that somewhere, like put it in a config file or encrypt it somewhere if you've got a settings file, because um, you only see it once, just like most key store things, right? So you'll get access to it once, and then you want to put it in your configuration settings for your deployment environments. All right, so a little bit of the Azure DevOps specific things you might want to do to include in your Appian deployment. Uh, so we saw how to associate a ticket, right? So that's the easiest way to associate a package or an, to an Azure Epic or an Azure Story. Um, and then you can also name the package accordingly. So if you don't want to use that URL, but maybe when you're listing the packages that are available, you want to name it the same as you named one of your Azure Stories. You can do that as well if you don't want to use a ticket. Um, so a couple of different ways you can do that. Uh, we can, the deployments can then be scripted, as we talked about, with all the various languages that we might want to use. And then if you're using Azure Pipelines to run your scripts, scripts can be launched and run using that mechanism. This is a simple example of how an app might be deployed using Azure DevOps pipelines using the REST API. So in this example, you, might, you can see a dev, a test, a production instance of Appian. And then when the Azure pipeline or the other scripting process triggers, uh, the, the existing package or it creates a package and then exports it and then imports it to the upstream environment. So this is kind of a simplified view of it. But I thought since um, we hadn't looked at Azure DevOps, I'm, I've got just a short, it's a two minute video just to kind of show you how the whole process works. I'm gonna look at it on this screen because, so you can see this is an Azure DevOps project. So you have the summary of the project. You can have dashboards within Azure DevOps, which is pretty nice. They have a wiki built in. So if you wanna build knowledge based articles, you've probably seen a lot of this on GitHub as well. And then you also have boards available. So this is like where you can uh, build, build all your task lists and everything. And there's, then there's a Kanban style board if you've ever used Trello or a tool like that. I love these type of things when I'm doing projects because it's a great way to do to-do lists and that sort of stuff. And then you've got your sprints and queries and all the information. So, so if you want to learn more about Azure DevOps, I would, this is about the two minute version of how to how use it. But what's more important is the repos coming up. So this is what a Git repository might look like. You'll see here, you've got Azure Pipeline's YAML file, which is for settings. But then this example also shows we've got a zip package at the bottom, but this is one that's been expanded. And you can see this is what your XML looks like. So this is what one of your user interface XMLs, or I think this particular one is a, a constant URL, but, but it's all XML, right? So it's not executable code, 
but it is reference information for your application. I've used it to pull sale information um, from assets before, but um, the nice thing is to remember is Appian has built-in version control as well. So a lot of times you're gonna go back to that if you're lo looking for older versions of objects. This is more, uh, I, to, me, to me the whole Azure DevOps part of it is if you're doing the automated deployments. And here you can see we're running a sample pipeline. So this is a script you can set up in Azure DevOps to either run in the cloud or you can have um, on your servers locally where these processes run. So this particular one's running a job. And then you can see, you can actually monitor and see what it's doing. So it's initializing, it's checking out assets, it's running a couple of scripts. And then I didn't, I, I have my Python script on there, but it's commented out because I don't have my Python script stuff set up on this particular environment because I, I didn't have access to a local agent for this one. But you can see these will run, and then, then these pipelines are basically like running scripts out of um, Azure DevOps, and then you get all the information back in Azure, De Azure DevOps, so you can either manually review it or have some automation scripts that review that as well. And here, you, I believe you can also run Python, you can run any sort of shell scripts that run in Linux, Linux or you can run PowerShell. So those are my three favorite ones for automation. All right. So let's talk quickly about, uh, we're, we're getting to the tail end here. Let's talk about a few community application deployment utilities. Uh, if you don't have any versioning at all and you're not using Azure DevOps, we actually do have the automated versioning manager. And I won't go into detail on it here, but there's URLs and there's lots of good information on our community site for reading about that. Here's a screenshot I lifted from the community site. So that if you're not doing anything for version control today, outside of uh, Appian, you could certainly look at this, and it does some of the automation. To, they have subversion in here and Git. Subversion was sort of the predecessor to Git. And then we also have the automated import manager plugin and client as well, and that's another utility that can be used, and these are all in the Appian community app market. So you can download those from there. And then there's another sample screenshot, and this is all, these are all on the community site as well, but I wanted to aggregate them all here so you had them in this deck when it gets shared. All right, so for further reading, so last year, my inspiration for this was so, uh, one, of, one of our customers, Aegon, did a session on Azure DevOps last year, and I, I happened to pick up the video because I was doing a customer session, and I needed to educate them a little bit, so I used that session, and I modeled this session not more as a how-to session as, as opposed to a customer story session, but make sure to check out that YouTube link, because he does it. Aegon has done a great job of integrating our, the Azure DevOps uh, with Appian. There's a link to the REST API documentation. Our API docs are great. I learned all, of my, all that I needed to know from there. And then there's a couple links to Appian community content. And finally, there's a repo sample if it's if, at the bottom. Uh, and I think these decks get shared, but uh, out on the internet, I've created a Git repo that will have these scripts and I'll be updating those. There's, there's a, probably a good half of them there right now. I'm finishing up the rest of them. So you'll have a complete set of examples that you can start from. Nothing proprietary there. It's just PowerShell and Python scripts that you can use when you're starting your own deployment processes. So, so hopefully that's useful. All right. so. What did we cover in, uh, ooh, 23 minutes, pretty good. So uh, how, how deployment can be automated with the Appian Development API, how developments can be scripted. All these concepts, even though I named the title Azure DevOps, can, will work with GitLab or GitHub or any other of those tool sets that you might be using. So never fear, you don't have to use Azure DevOps. It's not your favorite. Uh, and, I, and I also, as I mentioned, provided the Git repository link. So I hope to hear from some of you that you're actually using these examples and even suggest pull requests, example changes, that sort of stuff. So get started with app, automating your Appian deployment. Thanks.